Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. I do not know what happened on the opposite side of the bracket between uh, Gebs and actually it's I'm trying to remember who's on the other side. We'll see them down the line. Fisheye uploaded replays, it looks like, but other players opted not to. Fisheye is starting in the bottom left hand corner as the blue Protoss. Bottom right hand corner, we have Gebs starting as the orange Protoss. This is going to be on Ascension. Going to try to do, again, round of 32 replay uploads are optional, and therefore. I am not always clear on... <laughs> I have to have the replay pack sorted for me, basically, uh, with anti-spoilers. But sometimes you hop into the anti-spoiler fo folder and there's no replay there. Uh, so round of 32 has a few more gaps. Round of 16, I believe, will have everything. Gebs. This is an uh, interesting map for PvP, Ascension. I actually have been thinking about it at large, partly because the natural expansion... It's rampless, but... Even with the ramplessness, you've got those gaps, very the blue storm gaps, outside the natural expansion. And over the third, you've got that high ground. So it, it does feel like larger troop groupings, particularly in the mid game, win you the match PvP. But I've also been thinking about the fact that unless you're going DT drop, unless you're going shuttle DT, because there's just wide room to drop off Dark Templar, which is going to slow down, because usually if Protoss are going for a DT opening, they're just going to shoot the gaps. But because these gaps are so blockable at various locations, and because it's kind of a weaving pattern to walk around on the map, I also wonder if a DT opener is less viable. These are just kind of the thoughts I've been having in my brain overall. Looks like we are seeing Gateway Assimilator. Two gate tends to be pretty strong on this map because it is rampless and early game zealots can help you move into that early game in advantageous position. Speaking of which, we've got a double gateway opener here from Fisheye. Let's see if he goes, or sorry, from Gebs. Let's see if he goes for just the initial three zealots. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> ah, ooh, sneeze commentary. Bless me. Gebs scouting 12 o'clock location first. Fisheye producing an initial zealot. Not mining gas as of yet. Probably going to do the two zealots, then get the cybernetic score up, play the game from there. That tends to be the typical response we do have the initial three zealots being produced the first zealot rather than just marching towards the front doing a little bit of damage fisheye is an experienced enough player where i feel like he's going to be able to respond to this without too much trouble despite the lack of ramp it looks like also this is a big indicator for fisheye that assimilator going down lets you know that it's not likely to be more than five zealots and oftentimes players will pause on just the initial three zealots that are trying to march through a probe is here. Two zealots are here for Fisheye to go ahead and block the front door and deny information. Ooh, and that probe took a lot of hits to the face, so it's not going to be a lot of help if it's going to try to breach. Cybernetic score is up. Third zealots produced from Fisheye. So Fisheye is basically going to have three zealots and a Dragoon on the way by the time Gebs even makes his way this direction. So here's the initial three zealots marching out. But with the timing of it, yeah, that Dragoon's going to be there, plus... The probe to even it up. It's going to be even fight on the front door. Looks like there's a manor pylon that was able to get a few resources blockaded on Fisheye's side of the map. Or sorry, on Geb's side of the map. That's always kind of a nice little win. So Geb's, let's see if he's going to make a shot at this. One zealot comes off the line. And it was three on one there. So slight advantages. But then the, this zealot wanders off, allowing a more advantageous situation. But the Dragoon coming off the line. The probe not engaging, but Geb's with some nice engagement early fisheye not really paying attention a little bit but still is going to hold i guess not really feeling the need to dedicate a lot of micro there but still holds one zealot with a little bit of help the probe able to walk in and see the citadel of a dune uh morphing in now the question is is it is, is the citadel of dune for a dt follow-up or is it just going to be quick zealot leg speed as far as a turn it looks like we do have range being upgraded no range for fisheye it looks like it is going to be a templar archives to get Dark Templar. Third gate for Gebs. I think he's... So let's see if he gets the timing to deal with the Dark Templar. Does need to get a robotics facility. So yeah, he's going to go three gate Robo. So that little bit of scouting information, very, very helpful for him. It is possible Fisheye... So Fisheye currently with a decent economic lead between the Manor Pylon, between everything else that happened. He's still got this probe in this base. He's going to see that that Robo's there. So he's going to grab two gate. Now, here's the thing. Maybe this is just to get the Dark Templar. I've seen Jayun do 
something similar here and there, which is basically you get the Dark Templar out to go ahead and get a degree of map control so that your opponent is forced more or less to get that robotics facility and then you can go ahead and expand. The thing is, as far as that does give a, in this instance, it is going to give an economic lead because Gebs is not taking his natural expansion. But with that third gateway, he's going to be able to produce additional units. There's no third gateway yet for Fisheye. It's going to be a little bit of time before he's going to have an economy, that economic advantage kick in. He is dropping that forge potentially to go ahead and get detection and some counteraction of his own. The first Dark Templar is moving out. Ooh, this might be close. The Observer, I think, is going to spawn just in the nick of time to hover over the natural expansion. So as I'm like, oh yeah, I don't know about DTs on this map. Turns out Fisheye is turning it into a potentially advantageous build order. It's going to have that natural expansion up online well before Gebs does. And a good amount of map control otherwise with these initial two Dark Templar that are walking out. So basically going to be able to deny a portion of the... Forcing the Observatory. <laughs> working on the eggs. Forcing the Observatory. So there's that first obser Observer moving out. But keep in mind the Observer doesn't necessarily automatically mean that this Dark Templar is going to be able to get everything accomplished. Able to open it up right there, Dark Templar is going to get hunted down. But is that going to leave room? Yeah, it leaves room for the second Dark Templar to sneak in. And Gebs, did he spot it? I think he might have spotted it. Yeah, so he spotted this Dark Templar. He's trying to hunt it down. So if, No, maybe not. So peek the corner. Fisheye still has the Dark Templar in the base, and he's going to get probe kills out of this, which has got to be frustrating because it's one swipe, one kill for DTs. So already behind economically and falling further behind the probes grouping up. Nice drone drill. The probes get the Dark Templar kill in a rare turnabout. But now Geb's going to pull the trigger and move into Fisheye. However, Fisheye has a lot of cannons. He did go for High Templar as far as a turnaround. Storm might finish before it gets here. And this almost looks like uh, Fisheye is like, I know exactly how this is going to play out step-by-step -step sort of game. Honestly, impressive to, to see. It looks like some photon cannons warping in. He's got his natural expansion up. And they're coming through the gap, which is... And that Observer got picked off. So nothing going right. Fisheye, way ahead economically. He can go ahead and tack on additional gateways, additional tech, whatever he wants. It looks like he's getting plus one weapons as far as a follow-up. And he can drop a Psy Storm here momentarily. Which it looks like it... Not the best Psy Storm. There's a nice Psy Storm over the Dragoon line. But that's going to be plenty to defend this. I believe. This is five Dragoons left. Five, uh, four Cannons. Getting pushed back a little bit. And he holds. It's going to drop an extra cannon just in case. And Gebs is basically all in at this stage. He can't catch up economically. So he's got to just continue to push units out. And hope to get back in this map. Uh, in this match. Fisheye though a little bit late in dropping the third and fourth gateway. Does have additional size storm to work with though. And these are Dragoons that are going to be clumped up and fighting at a distance. So maybe if Gebs can just get some absolutely flawless micro, there could be room. But this this is a tall order. That's why Fisheye kind of putting on a clinic. There's a nice... And man, that, they just line up for that Psy Storm. Two Dragoons getting picked off with that. And there's still more Psy Storm to spare. More Dragoons and a Zealot now on the front. And a robotic facility coming online for Fisheye. So now Fisheye with a dominant economic lead. Gebs relegated to go ahead and grab his nexus and try to hold the front behind this but four gateways sorry five gateways of economic output are going to kick in which once fisheye catches up as far as just the flat ground army he's also going to have psy storm to work with behind this so in a really dominant dominant position zelt lake speed kicking in i do not see the observatory as of yet so potentially just discounting the potential for Dark Templar. There's it. Sorry, there's the observatory. It just came a little bit late. I was like, oh, is he going to go Robo on top of this? That seems a little bit greedy considering you already have DT. In the meantime, no robotic support bay also for Gebs. Moving up, picking off a cannon as best he can, trying to dodge out a storm. Looking to get another shot, eating a little bit more storm. And I think this is wise. Try to expend the size storms. Just... Dodge in if you can. Get some Psy Storm out of the way so you can maybe engage 
have better engagements after this. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to, he just wants to have a little bit of that shield shredded, not lose Dragoons. Fisheye starting to group up, not plopping additional, well, actually take it back. He's adding that fourth cannon. He can hold strong, and now he has that five gateways worth of production. Two additional gateways, sorry, three additional gateways being plopped down for Gebs. But the Psy Storm is going to be the big difference here. Ooh, that's just potentially the Zealot actually eating a little bit of its own storm. Fisheye is boxed in a little bit. But his troop count is starting to grow. Right now, his supply count is m lead is mostly in probes. But the Dragoons are starting to filter in. That plus the Psy Storm. Once he has an Observer out, he can start moving, bowling forward, and either grab his third if he feels like. Or just potentially push through and end the game. However, he does have to take... He does have to take the high ground, but the thing is, is taking the high ground is a much easier prospect when you have a bunch of Psy Storm behind it to just storm uphill. Because that forces the Dragoons back. These Dragoons are going to go ahead and come across the gap. And you can see the egg already being opened up for Fisheye to potentially make that move. Might have waited for Zealot Leg Speed to come online. The Observer is going to walk up. It's going to see that natural expansion. I think Fisheye knows that he's in a good position at this stage. Gebs kind of doing desperation measures to try to sneak back into this. So he's going to try to drop a third Nexus to stay ahead of Fisheye and then pray that somehow he can hold this front and keep Fisheye boxed into two bases. That is going to be extremely challenging. Seize the six gateways. Plus one, keep in mind there's also plus one weapons to contend with. So right now, both players macroing up for potentially a mid-game engagement, but Fisheye, the better economy, the better tech, and I still don't see a Templar. So there's the Templar Archives finally coming online for Gebs. Zelt leg speed about halfway finished. I'm wondering if Fisheye is just going to wait for plus two weapons to finish when he just opts to make his move. I don't think he needs to wait for that, though. But, yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to wait for it. He just wants to go ahead and get his units filtered out. I like what Gebs is doing. He's trying to hold some units to the north to potentially go for a pincer attack. That observer has been picked off. Fisheye being very cautious. Yeah, checking the army to the north. Now pressing in. Huge Psy Storm on a bundle of those units. Taking out two Dragoons basically for free. And now Gebs initially looked like he was going to dive in. But backing out a little bit. And he needs to get his army together. A single Zealot chasing. That's kind of a... This Zealot is not long for life, I don't think. Well, maybe he's going to get in this fight regardless. So chasing down that army, there, there's something about that. The Zealot who just, like, gets distracted from his army, and he's just so eager to fight and take things on that he just gets completely separated. But now, Fisheye with a huge army marching across the map, making his way towards that third that's not even up yet. He can just go ahead and take position on this high ground. Templar are not in position. Looks like some Zealots are out of position there for Fisheye, but I don't think it makes much of a difference because this is just going to be an onslaught from Fisheye steadily. More Psystorm on the back lines, and I think Gebs knows he needs to hold this position. This is his most optimal engagement point. If he loses this positioning, ooh, some Dragoons able to sneak in underneath, getting some shots and some High Templar. Doesn't look like they were able to take any out, but yeah, there's GG. Just overwhelming troops. So despite what I said in the opener, Fisheye making the Dark Templar work. Lessons for Diggity in PvP. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Fisheye advances to the round of 16, and I'll see if I have any other replays for this group. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.